Hello my friends. The topic at hand today is the cross slide of my mini lathe. If we disassemble it, we'll see that there are no bearings inside. As a result, there is metal rubbing on metal in here and in here. There is either like a lot of backlash here, or if I tighten the nut more, then it's really hard to turn. There is kind of uneven force that I have to apply. It, it doesn't go straight, so it's kind of rubbing. Sometimes it's rubbing here, sometimes it's not. So it's just not cool. So we'll try to make it cool. So my idea for improving this part is to put bearings in there. Usually it is advised to use thrust bearings. But I'm not a huge fan of thrust bearings because first of all they fall apart like this. Second, they need grease. And third, they're only good for taking the, first, the forces that go straight in this direction. But not up and down or left and right. Instead, my idea is to use just normal roller bearings. It's cheap and it's versatile and I think it will do a better job. The only problem with it is that it doesn't fit here. It wouldn't clear this lip. So instead, on that side I will use a smaller roller bearing. Because I don't want to cut this original piece, preserve it as it is, and um, in case I make a mistake, which I inevitably will, a plastic part here will work just as well. This plastic part is very similar to this one. So the difference between these two parts is mostly that here I have place for the bearing to sit and on the back I also have a place for a bearing to sit. I also have a bigger bore inside. So there's a 12 mm diameter hole going through this part while there's only 8 mm here. The reason I made a bigger hole is that the inner ring of the bearing would not be touching the part from the inside, allowing for easier rotation. Another change I made here is added this little piece of plastic on top of the bearing so that it would not be exposed. So now you can see how this works, right? There is a little loop here that allows for the cross slide to be pushed in that direction. There is a key slot here for the key so that the handle can drive it. And you can see that the handle is all dirty and I just uh, wiped and oiled it yesterday and in just a few turns you can see that the aluminum is already coming off. I printed this with 40% in fill, but I still wouldn't go crazy tightening those nuts. It's, it's really easy to crack the plastic. It feels pretty solid. Nothing's moving. Let's just put in the key back. And so now, before I couldn't tighten this nut, because if I tighten it, it just this stops moving. Now I can tighten it quite a bit. So first of all, it goes real easy now. So I can do this with one finger without, you know, much effort. Doesn't matter which way, which way I go. And if you look at the distance over here be between the metal and the plastic part, it uh, just stays the same. Well, before it was constantly changing, so it was kind of wobbling. So now it's straightened out. Another question to think about here is whether I could have used the smaller bearing on this side as well, just to reduce the number of parts I need to buy. And I think the answer is no, because the outer ring of this bearing and the inner ring would both be touching this part of the handle. But I only want the inner ring of the bearing to be touching the handle. This is why I chose the bigger bearing for this side and smaller bearing for that side. Now that I have a bearing here, um, this part will no longer be rubbing against the metal, it will be just sitting tight against the inner ring. So looking at this part, it's not too complicated, but there are some details. So let me just open Fusion 360, and so we create a new sketch, 36.3. So now I just press the circle tool here and, and make a diameter 36.3. As you see in this sketch, I used just three tools, circle, rectangle and a line. Then I specified dimensions, which allowed me to then extrude certain profiles from this sketch and make the full part. You can now see the series of extrusion steps that I took. Sometimes I was adding to the body, sometimes I was removing. Then I rounded some of the edges and saved the body as an STL file. Then I just open the STL file in the 3D printer program. 
I set the adhesion, remove the support because I think it will be good without supports, set the infill to 40%, just inserting the card, selecting print, and scrolling to the end of the list, and here is our item. Now the part has printed, all that's left is to remove the adhesion layer and also clean up the mess in here. Now the question is, how do we put the bearings in? Of course, uh, it's possible just to hammer it in with a soft hammer or with uh, woodworking clamps. Now we have our part and it's working great, just like the other one. While we're at it, we might as well go one step further and add a motor to run the cross slide. The question is, where do we put it? A typical motor to use for such an application would be a stepper motor. So this is NEMA 17 and this is NEMA 23. So you see the difference in size is significant and also the difference in torque they provide is also pretty big. So this is 0.4 newton meters and this is I believe one and a half newton meters. So this guy is more than three times more powerful. But it's also much bigger. So a simple solution would be to just put a big motor over here instead of this handle, right? But then we don't have manual control. And this is a manual aid after all, so I would like to keep the manual controls in place. From the back. But for that I would need to move back this cover and I'd like to preserve the original dimensions of the lathe as much as possible. Also on the back where the nut comes out there is no bearing. My original idea was to remove this guy. I'm not really happy removing it because it is still useful to have. There is space to put it here but then the question comes how do I attach it? and it's really hard to attach it. Uh, I would have to mill some kind of metal bracket. And here you can see a bunch of 3D models that I tried to use to hold the NEMA 23 model in, motor in here. It wasn't nice. I didn't like it. And so here is what I came up with. I use a smaller motor, but then I use a 1 to 3 reduction. I put this motor over here instead of this mount that we just used. I can keep the handle in place. So I'm still kind of working on this part, uh, I'm not super happy how it looks and how it assembles and disassembles, but you can notice that this gear is like kind of crooked. I was printing it without adhesion, so there was no layer here holding the gear to the table. You just take the dial off of this and instead of the dial we're going to put this guy here. And so this is just pressure fit. I have two favorite tools, uh, double-sided sticky tape and a soft hammer. These screws are both holding the cover and they're pulling the stepper motor. And plug it from behind. And it's uh, very neat, nice and cozy. 
and I can still operate this handle, even though it's less convenient, but I can operate it. And just like that, we've got ourselves a motorized cross sled. On the cross slide, we don't need high speeds like on the lead screw, so I think a 1 to 3 reduction is reasonable. I'm pretty happy with the sound of it running. And it's actually strong enough. I can't stop it. I'm pulling with full force. Ugh. This is a work in progress and I'm sure we will come up with many improvements for this design. Please share your ideas in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.